series on prayer, right? You know, we learned a lot about prayer, and one of the things that uh, we um, learned is that it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a, a emergency safety yeah. net that we just only pray when we're in trouble. Uh, when we pray, uh, we have to realize that we ain't all that and a bag of chips. Amen. We, we have to pray and ask God to forgive us of those thoughts, those deeds, those attitudes that we have from time to time that just don't please him. Am I right about it? Amen. And then uh, one of the things that we learned is Jesus said uh, to his disciples, you ought to pray so that you don't faint. In other words, we talked about don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. Keep praying. Keep living faithful. God is moving in that situation. Even if you don't see it, yeah. God is at work. And then today we're going to talk about uh, the importance of prayer. But five things the Bible says that hinders our prayer. Amen. Because all, right. all of us want to be able to get a prayer through, right? There's going to be some emergency situations. There's just going to be some life situations that you need to be able to talk to the creator and the father about. And he welcomes us as a welcome guest to the throne of grace. He said, come humbly yet boldly to the throne of grace that we might receive mercy and grace to help in a time of need. And so five things the Bible says. All right, there are more, but we're going to talk about five today. That are five, and I must just set before you all once, and some of you might find some of the things surprising, and then we'll consider each one briefly. Five things the Bible says will hinder our prayers. Number one, sin in our life. Number two, idols in our heart. Number three, unforgiveness in our spirit. Num number uh, four, stinginess in our giving. All right. And number five, mistreatment in our homes. Yeah. Let's tell you the story. Okay. So we were sitting in the uh, break room at work, right? Sitting around like we normally do eat. And our supervisor was there. And he said something that just rubbed me the wrong way. Did I tell y'all this story? Yeah. Okay, well, just act like you never heard it. <laughs> amen. Amen. There's some folk that didn't hear this story, amen. Y'all yeah. just pulled me to the side if I add something that I didn't have last time, okay? <laughs> so, the man said something, and all these people sitting around the table, and I had just had enough. You ever been there? <laughs> and boy, I told him about himself, and I didn't even cuss. I cut the, I tore out, boy, I got him good. I didn't even cuss. And everybody looking around like, oh boy, my God. You know, and then here come the devil after which, you know. And I, I felt good about it for a little while. You know what I mean? Boy, yeah. And then here come the devil. What about buddies? Boy, I'm glad you told him. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm so glad you finally told him. And I, you know, and the devil had me all puffed up. Yeah, I sure told the boss off. Then I got home. Amen. I had that ride home from Chesterfield. Amen. With the radio off. And I started thinking about what I had done. I said, Lord, I done just acted a fool up in this place. You hear me? Talk to this man any kind of way. Everybody else looking at him, just wondering about me. They know I'm a preacher, you know. They know I'm a man of God. I just, uh -huh. oh, man, I told the man off and felt good about it. But on that ride home, baby, the Holy Spirit started working on me. Amen. Be quick to listen and slow to speak, slow to anger. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I had messed up. And so what I did the next day, the Lord gave me strength to do this. I said, you know what? I'm going to go to this man and apologize. I said, I'm going to go to him. And I did. And I waited till everybody was there. It was at lunch period, mm -hmm. right? And I said, no, I pulled him to the side first and talked to him privately. I said, hey, man, yesterday what I did was uncalled for. 
I could have easily pulled you to the side and talked to you privately about my concern. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so uh, he was like, oh, no, you know, that's nothing. I wasn't mad, you know. Just lying. <laughs> Amen. He was mad as a firecracker. <laughs> he was mad, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, Prowl, I, you know, everything's okay, you know. I said, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, sir. When we have lunch today and everybody's sitting around, I'm going to apologize to you in front of them. Amen. And boy, you know what? That wasn't in me. God had to strengthen me to do that. You hear me? God had to give me the supernatural yeah. power to obey his word and go and ask this man to forgive me in front of everybody. And so, uh, and so I told my friend about it. Here come the devil again. I said, I'm going to ask him, I'm going to apologize. Man, don't you ain't got to apologize to him. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Always somebody, the love of the devil always. Yeah, man, come on, proud. You, don't have, you ain't got to apologize to him. So we sat in that lunchroom, and I apologized to him. I said, man, hey, yesterday I stood up. I said, man, I apologize to you, sir. I said, my behavior was not right. Amen. I should respect you as my supervisor, mm -hmm. and I didn't. Even though I didn't curse, I talked to you bad, and that was wrong. And I set the wrong example for everybody else in this shop. And man, he shook my hand. You hear me? Yeah. Gave me a hug. And, um, and, um, and I saw him. Uh, what happened was uh, the Lord had blessed me. He blessed me too. Yeah. He blessed me, right? So when I was trying to get this job where I've been 21 years, they called me at work. And they said, hey, you still interested in this job? Job still open? Or are you still interested? I said, yes, I am. And they said, well, uh, we need to speak to your supervisor. I didn't even see that coming. We need to speak to your supervisor. And so <laughs> I called him and I said, hey, doc. I said, they on the line trying to hire me. And I said, if you can give me a good reference, I would appreciate it. And I hung up. And I didn't hear nothing from St. Louis U or him. So I asked him, I said, do you mind sharing with me what you see? <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he said, I told him that you was a dependable, hardworking individual, and you'll be a good fit for their team. He said, they asked me a one out of 10, I gave you a seven, because there's always room for improvement. All right. I said, thank you, sir. Do you hear me? And uh, the Lord blessed me because I, it, just think if I hadn't went back to him. Yeah. I didn't know they was going to call him like that. You know what I'm saying? Just doing right. Huh? God will take your what doing right and he will bless you because you just did the right thing. Yeah. Amen.